Hey you guys, it's a beautiful sunny day and I'm here at Durham Elementary and I'm going to document the garden uh, to share it with you guys but also to document it for me to keep track of its progress. So, so apologize for the glare, it's just really sunny. Um, when it comes to school gardens, this is on the larger side. I think I've got like 32 of these beds. I don't recommend growing in stock tanks, they're um, not the easiest. Uh, galvanization can leach nickel and mess up, up there but they get really hot during the summer and so you just the soil just it literally retracts from the edges um, but anyway I let the um, broccoli always go to flower because then I can just send the kids over and tell them that they can pick and um, eat individually a big part of what I do with school gardens is trying to spread out the students so that they can experience the garden without being controlled. So like seeing, here's another example right here. There's Napa cabbage, but rather than cutting off the whole head and chopping it up for them, I said, okay, you can have as many leaves as you want off of that cabbage and they can peel individual leaves off. And actually in that last class, I kind of wish they'd finished it off because I don't have classes for a little bit. But, um, but that's, that's the strategy. That's, what, that's my philosophy when it comes to gardening. Um, you know, I can send them to the lettuce. I got lots of lettuce patches for them to experience. Um, I could just send them to the oregano to pick some leaves. And it was really cool today. We just basically um, made a bunch of salads. You know, I get a bunch of bowls and they can pick their broccoli tips. And they can even, um, I have my older classes, fourth and fifth grade, using knives, you know, chopping stuff up. There's a lot of kohlrabi still. We've eaten a lot of food out of this garden. So lots of heads of broccoli have gone, even though there's still... Um, you know, full heads that are left. Lots of um, peas, um, snow peas, sugar snap peas, stuff like that. I'm um, getting to teach them, you know, to wait a little bit until they're bigger. Um, but yeah, you know, here, a head of cauliflower probably. So another thing I do is just to spread them out, I have this area, which is all uh, just materials that most of them were actually here, a lot of blocks were already here. But I brought in some pallets and decks and things. And in this space, they have free reign to play as long as the play is creative, calm energy play. Um, so I do tell them not to stack the blocks high and I get to give them reminders and stuff because obviously this is kind of scary. Um, but you know it's it's fun to see what they do they'll build you know imaginary buses or fortresses and things and it's just it's like blocks for big kids and what that does is that'll take like five or six students so that'll take five or six students uh, away from that competition energy and it'll allow me to be uh, more able to let them do some harvesting because there won't be competition around the harvesting uh, or I'll be able to let them use a knife and walk away for a minute because uh, the energy in that space is safe. There, there's not competition energy and, and they, they're capable so they can do all those things. So uh, back to the garden over here. Let's see, let's see. Um, but this is your typical, you know, late spring Houston garden. You know, that's my late planting of snow peas. Um, and I just, you know, had the kids tuck them all, all over the place. So it's sad that we miss them, but it'll be good because we'll collect seed from them. We got some more Romanesco. Um, there's definitely still heads of cabbage. But this in front of us is what I really wanted to document. This space was all just field um, about a year and a half ago. Um, and then we had to wait for a whole year for the construction of that monstrosity. So we were kind of locked out of the space. But now, if you can see from the logs, taking it over, it's food forest time. And it's just like one thing at a time. So this pond is because I have kids, you know, fourth graders that, that age and that intense energy. It's like, I need to dig, I need, you know, like, and they're so destructive. So I let them dig holes and fill them back in. And no, I'm not bad like in the movie holes, but like you see back there, there's a hole. Um, I'll say like, oh, we're going to make a pond or oh, I'm going to plant a tree and then they'll dig the whole class and well, don't tell them, but um, then another class will fill it in. But anyway, this pond is um, under construction, so I'm going to mortar in these blocks around the sides of it and, um, and then plant it, let it start healing in. 
but the reason we put a pond here was because the soil just held water incredibly it was weird you know it might have been some irrigation leak because they were working on it but um, that's why it's there and it's sunken below so it should should last the summer um, there's mint patches from just throwing some you know ry rhizomes of mint um, we just planted uh, right there that kumquat today so that's new just bringing in bags of leaves and the main new things for today are these blueberries um, I wanted to get them planted with the classes we got one planted which is decent um, and the way I got a good video on blueberry soil and everything but I'm bringing in you know peat and pine bark and all that and logs for edging um, here's a peach tree now I made that cut and you should make your cuts too I almost just cut it here because this thing had the weirdest tallest spindliest ugliest form and so um, these are our future main branches right down here it just needed to be lowered it was all up like sorry I didn't realize the glare I was all up really high so you do that to your first year planting peach trees and they grow right out of it um, over here on the other side you'll start to see the logs course and it is totally it's for our hardcore parkour and um, and the kids are learning how to play on it without me which is huge and powerful you know I set some boundaries up like I don't want them uh, moving logs around and um, I don't want any competition on it but um, yeah I sent them over here I told them to challenge themselves to like put um, they had a little turtle Oh, there he is on top of that but wherever the turtle is when he started over there like you can't touch that log kind of stuff um, and there's logs over here for climbing on too. eventually we'll connect it all so here's the blueberry planting Mickey style um, this is about a foot raised up and this is because I don't know you know the pH of the soil beneath um, so I brought in sulfur this bag was full after two blueberry plantings um, it's half emptied so probably two two pounds in each planting but um, but so raised beds with a lot of pine bark peat um, heavy hay mulch or uh, pine straw and I think they're gonna do really well so, so yeah this whole area is gonna be you know perennial edges food foresty uh, with the you know as much um, wildflower shrub perennials towards the middle and then this kind of water course because there's a lot of water coming off of that roof um, in fact this little puddle is going to be a future pond site so I let the kids dig again they're like oh, I want to dig I want to dig so I said okay and it'll be another pond and maybe it'll be a rain garden or maybe it'll be a full-on pond I don't even know we'll see um, here's the Saruga persimmon that recently planted um, it's kind of crazy to think you know persimmon right high pH you know, eight feet from a blueberry low pH um, but that's how we're doing it um, you can tell what that board's for they were playing with it um, but yeah here's the course Do you want to go along for the ride and so it's way it's way overdone like you know little gaps and that's just for first graders you know because they can do it too this is new this is an avocado a really great cultivar called fantastic um, if you cannot tell because GoPro is bad about distorting that mound is like two feet high this is a lot of soil and it was from the pond dig so here's the pond out at Durham Elementary it got dug as a detention pond for the massive you know impervious surface this neighborhood is like super close to flooding in Harvey and this is a really nice neighborhood so uh, yes they forced them to dig it but a, a detention pond you know without planning for draining it just is a pit and it is definitely a retention pond and so um, yeah it's exciting to be able to have water this area is fenced in I think that's how they can get away with it bureaucracy wise but I've already stuck some irises in on the edge and we're going to um, hopefully build some decking on this edge for access and just continue to improve this area as far as how this has all developed it's just basically been claiming lawn by smothering it out with leaves and that is that's 
what I recommend, folks, you just throw leaves on top of it right here. What is happening? You just throw in leaves on top of it. And in fact, in this area, there's a bunch of uh, sugarcane stems. So there, it is going to get sun, just not right now. But yeah, we marked our edge to kind of get away with how messy it looks. And the kids have an after school program, so there's always trash blowing in. But all of this area is just, you know, six to ten inches or more of leaves and it hasn't been planted yet. I'm claiming it first and then, well, other than that little beauty berry in my shadow, um, it hasn't really been planted. And it's the same technique that was used over here. So this right here, these two citrus trees, they were sitting in the middle of lawn about a year ago when I first started, maybe a year and a half even. And so all this space in between was just leaves and you can see you know we got oak saplings in the middle um, th there might be other seedling stuff coming through but it's relatively clean and we're absolutely going to fill it in make a little path and uh, it's just going to give so much vitality to the citrus trees help them out there's a really nice aloysia here on the far end um, so a lot of good things happening over here lantana for the butterflies and uh, yeah, that's about it. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed the tour here. I'm pretty excited about this project, so I just wanted to share it, and I'll catch y'all next time. Peace.